Hey, hey, System College, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to the Ronaldinho Rebuild of Barcelona. Yes, my friends, it's time. Another rebuild based on an X player. This time, it's Ronaldinho. We have done it with Stevie G for Aston Villa, for example, and now Barcelona is being taken over by the Joga Bonito God. And... Of course, now having him as the coach of Barcelona, that means we get to follow his rules of team building and we will base it upon the experience and the skills of Ronaldinho. I have a couple of simple steps that we have to follow for this rebuild in order to take Barcelona back to the top of world football. And here are the things that we have to follow. Two rules. The players that we bring in have to have high attacking work rate. Uh, he wants to see a super attacking team that has fun. A team that doesn't really think we have to sit back and defend. A team that thinks attack is the best defense. That is Ronaldinho's club. And on top of it, every single player in the starting lineup, except the center backs. But if it is possible, the center backs as well. But except the center backs now for the rules here, he has to have four star skills. Every single player has to have four star skills or five star that's the bare minimum. Four star is the minimum. Ronaldinho and his Brazilian national team back in the day with the Joga Bonito adverts. Everyone still remembers those, those Nike adverts from back in the day. They were crazy popping on the internet back then. And now we are going to bring back Joga Bonito into world football. I want to make it happen. Simple rules, but they perfectly suit the likes of Ronaldinho. Let's do this rebuild. Let's take Barcelona back to the top. If you're excited, smash that like button. Ronaldinho, let's have some fun. Oh, and by the way, just one more thing that I wanted to add. The team has to have at least three Brazilians in there as well. We got to stay, too tr stay true to Ronaldinho's roots. And I feel like Barcelona, with him as being one of the biggest icons of the club, we have to bring back a couple of Brazilians, especially if you consider during the time he played, we had the likes of Dani Alves there as well, who was an incredible Brazilian right back that has been the front runner for the people like Trent Alexander-Arnold to come through and do what they're doing now. Now, obviously, as you guys know, the Barcelona squad itself has a bunch of players that do fit the criteria of high attacking work rate and minimum four-star skill moves. But obviously, this video, the whole point of it is for us to go ahead and do a madness and do a proper rebuild. And I don't want it to be easy. So what's going to happen right now for this video to become interesting for you is exactly this. Frankie de Jong, goodbye. Depay, released. Antoine Griezmann, anyone. Everyone and everyone can get it. And that means we are going to be letting go of all the high-rated players off the Barcelona squad for free. Not getting a single penny for any of them. And that is what it is, guys. We're going to be dealing with the team. And I get to keep one player. At first, I thought I want to keep De Jong. De Jong but then I felt like he's too high rated. It's going to make it too easy. Then I looked at Pedri and I was like, I love you. But I love another player in this team even more. Just one player I'm going to keep for myself for this rebuild. And that one player will come up in a second here for you guys to see. That one player I'm talking about is Ansu Fati. I'm going to keep him in the squad. The rest of the team, the entire team will be rebuilt. Now, I got to be careful. I can't release too many players, right? Uh, I need a couple still. I get to release at least four more. So let's go ahead and do that right now. This is what will make this video interesting for you guys. And hopefully you'll have some fun watching. I'm excited about this. Hey, Araujo, I think you're sick, but I will have to let you go as well. Neto, I I'll keep Testegen. Uh, because I feel like the goalkeeper position has absolutely no importance to what we're trying to build here with like the skillers and the high attacking work rate. So if it's fine for you, Testagan is going to be kept. If you want me to sell him on, I can do that as well. But then again, I feel like it's kind of pointless. The goalkeeping position doesn't really matter. Uh, Neto, um, he can stay as a backup in case, in case Testagan gets injured. For me, it's all about the attack and stuff. So every single player, apart from Ansu Fati, even... Uh, you know what? Braithwaite can stay because Dest probably has higher value. So I'm going to let go of Dest. Braithwaite can stay. He's 30. He'll probably retire in a couple of years here. But every single person you know <laughs> and loved for the Barcelona squad has basically just been released. Ansu Fati, it's you and me now, buddy. Well, that just had a massive impact on the wages. <laughs> We now have 330, uh, 330 million on the wages right now. Uh, on the transfer budget, sorry. Which means... 
he got to spend some good money. Now, we could have had at least like five, six hundred million, seven hundred, whatever. If we sold every single player, I'm pretty sure we could have. But right now, we're left with 337. And you know what? For the first season, I don't want to go too overboard. I'm not going to spend the entire budget. I'm going to calm myself down a little bit. But it's time to bring in the first players. So let's get on with it. The first player I have in mind when I think of Ronaldinho... There's just one specific one that kind of has his vibes these days. Not as good as him, but skill-wise, he's a beast. We have just negotiated the first deal of Ronaldinho. And of course, the rules say that we have to get at least a minimum of three Brazilians. I think I have said that before. We have to get three Brazilians into the squad. Uh, that is another rule that we have here. And Anthony is someone that I personally feel like is massive. I think he is incredible in terms of dribbling. I think this guy has a huge upside to him. And obviously, Ansu Fati playing down the left. We had to bring in someone to play down that right wing position. Someone Brazilian, someone that can get past people, someone that will create special moments. Anthony is the main man that I want. And 105 million takes off a big chunk of our budget. So after all, the budget that we have might not be that big. Because if I have to pay this much for a player that's at his rating, which is like 81, 82... How am I supposed to rebuild so quickly? So, yeah, uh, maybe I'll have to use the entire budget. <laughs> All jokes aside, we have one center back in the team left. That's Mingesa. I've released everyone. The second signing also cost me 100 million. <laughs> I, I have to be careful here. I think I kind of underestimated the fact that I just released my entire team. And, um, well, <laughs> your boy has only 300 million to spend to build up an entire squad and I've just spent two thirds of it on two players. What am I doing? Kune is now joining because he has the high attacking work rate. Obviously, the only center back, according to Sofifa, that can, that has four star skills is De Jong. De Jong, I just released him. So he's a CDM that can possibly play center back where he would be lower rated, but that would be stupid anyways. I'm not going to do that. Kunde comes in now. Anthony has come in and I'm left with a bunch of I don't even know how I'm supposed to describe these people. <laughs> I have such a little amount of money. What am I doing spending so much on two players? How much do I have left? I have 139 million left, which might sound a lot to a lot to a bunch of you people out there, but I have to buy a whole team. So Anthony and Kunde are the marquee signings. Let's focus on the rest and try and do something with it. All of the money that we had has now been spent by Ronaldinho. Dahoud is the final transfer we are going for. A man that I had the opportunity to interview is probably one of the funniest guys I have gotten to know in the world of football. Hilarious dude, constantly making jokes off camera, on camera. Really, really great guy to work with because at times... When you're in those types of situations, you feel like, oh man, these guys are football players. These guys are millionaires. Like, why would they behave like they're on the same level as me when you talk to them, right? You just have to have these weird thoughts in your head. But at the end of the day, these guys are just normal human beings as well. And Dahoud was class to work with. And we are bringing him in, into the Barcelona squad. He might be 25 years old, but I feel like he's the right choice for us. He's a four-star skiller with high attacking work rate as well. And uh, that brings him into the squad. Now, the team <laughs> is set up. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead into the transfer history and show you what we've done. So, the players that we have brought in, let me show you right now. Anthony, 105 million. Kunde, 95 million. Then I've gone ahead and brought in Alvarez. This kid has been incredible for the River Plate in Argentina. And it is a player that I personally wanted to buy on SoRare. Then I realized, oh my God, this guy's worth thousands of dollars. Like if you want to buy him on that game. So I said, yeah, you know what? No, <laughs> but if I can, I'll use my chance to go ahead and bring him into one of my career mode videos. And Ronaldinho does bring in this Argentinian into his squad because you know what? Ronaldinho had a great Argentinian that he brought up right after himself by the name of, you might know him, Messi. And <laughs> so we are going to build up Another Argentinian at Barcelona. It's going to be Alvarez coming in. He joined Leipzig, but then we picked him up instantly. And I made a mistake. I did pick up Boadu before, but I forgot that he doesn't have four-star skills. So I put Boadu into the deal and also plus 38 million to get Alvarez into the squad. So that was a little mishap that I fixed immediately. Then Dahoud has come in for 38 million plus Gavi. Bisuma has come into the squad, which I'm surprised he's a four-star skill. I didn't know about that. For Pooj, plus 14.2. 
Sergio Roberto has left. Boadu has come in, but then obviously left again. Ezequiel Palacios is another player that I've just signed for 15 million plus Gonzalez. Atal has joined for 12 million, a five-star, four-star player with high attacking work rate and an amazing player itself. And then Cessignon is coming in at the left-back spot. And with that, we pretty much have set up the entire team. Apart from the centre-back position, everything is new. Ansu, oh, of course, Ansu Fati as well. Ansu remains in the squad. Alvarez up top. Anthony down the right wing. Dahoud as a centre midfielder. Palacios as a centre midfielder. Bisuma playing the CDM role. Cessignon with the left back spot. Atal with the right back. Kunde, the second most expensive player on that right centre back position. And Mingessa is yet to be replaced. But then again, I mean, yeah, I should replace him. In the future, we will. But for now, it's not looking too bad. I mean, if you look at what we have left in the squad, it's kind of all right, you know? It's not it's not horrible, but it's not great either. We won't be winning La Liga with this, but it's a start for the rebuild, which I'm pretty happy with. I think we've done a great job considering that I had to completely rebuild the entire squad with the money that we have left. Just for confirmation, Alvarez, four-star high work rate. Anthony, Five-star high work rate. Atal, four-star high work rate. Dahoud, four-star, four-star high work rate as well. Palacios, same with him. Bisuma, same. Cessignon, if you want to check here as well. Four-star skill moves, high attack and work rate. So we have done the right thing uh, the right thing on all the players. And as I said, the centre-backs don't have to have four-star skills and above, but high work rate is still appreciated. And we have done that in that spot as well. Now, let's see how this first season goes with Barcelona. I don't necessarily have high hopes, but I wouldn't mind if they surprise me. By the way, I hope you guys appreciate the red and blue, the red back there, the blue all around. The Barcelona colors are all over the place. And your boy is looking at a team now in May 2022 that has won three games, lost one. I am seeing some consistencies against the lower sides, but we do struggle against the big ones, it seems. Sevilla, Real Sociedad. Ooh, Real Madrid beating an El Clasico. In the Europa League, we failed against Genk, and that just showcases we're not good enough. We just aren't. So, where did we end up? We finished in the third position. I'll take that. I will actually take that. That's not too bad. I'm pretty confident with us going into the Champions League that we'll be getting a lot of money. Only five points off Real Madrid, considering that this is the team that we have now. That's quite good, man. And, whoa, some players have grown, huh? <laughs> Testegen plus two. Kunde plus four. Anthony, plus six, gets in, pal. Ansu Fati looking insane, plus nine. <laughs> yes, what? Plus nine, how did you pull that off? Anyways, Dahoud with the plus four coming in as a 25-year-old. That is some incredible growth right there. And of course, the striker has done well. Everyone is unhappy about their contract. I'll fix that in a second. But my God, am I happy with this? This is looking incredible. Uh, you know what, lads? We've done a great job. Vage plus seven. Let's go. Ooh, we're going to make some money off of these players that are on the bench. Love to see that. That's good. Um, development wise or stats wise. Here we go. 27 goals, three assists for Ansu Fati. That was clear to see. I trusted him and he shows me exactly the type of performances that I want to see from Ansu Fati. He needs to be the leader of this team, but I never expected he would go up plus nine in one year. I have seen a couple of plus sixes and stuff. Those don't surprise me anymore for wingers and fullbacks, but plus nine. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Alvarez done well with 16 goals, but not exceptional. Anthony, decent season as well. Palacios for a midfielder, really good year. Dahoud, very, very good. Nice shoes, by the way. You guys can't see it because I'm above it, but he has those pink Pumas. Um, and then Demir has done well. Uh, but of course, he's going to be going back to uh, the team that he played for. And Kunde, decent. Happy with that. Hey, you know what? Third place in the first season. Not getting fired with this team. I'm happy with that. I have nothing to complain about. But I have a few plans for the future. Mingessa needs to go. Let's get to season number two. For the new season, my plans are clear. Mingessa needs to go and he needs to be replaced by a Brazilian. Yes, because so far we only have Anthony and no one else. No other Brazilians in here. And we need at least three. So one of them. He's going to join in right now. And the player I'm looking for is a player that was super hyped at the beginning of FIFA 22. Lucas Verissimo. But not in career mode. It was actually in Ultimate Team because of his pace. People loved this player. Now, he's a high attacking work rate center back, which fits into what we're trying to build here. 
And he does have some potential. Now, he doesn't have insanely high potential, though. So I will have to admit that straight away. Our budget this season, 249 million. Don't mind if I do. Mingessa goes into the deal. I mean, I should be able to get him for this, right? Easy. 26 million. I'll take that. That deal is done. Ronaldinho, he's doing another one of these. Let's go. One deal done and possibly more to come. I still need one more Brazilian. 108 million for this specific Brazilian, Lucas Paqueta. He's doing a great job in this season currently for Olympique Lyon. He is seeming to bring back the hype about himself right now. When he joined AC Milan, everyone's like, oh, he's the next Kaká, and then nothing really happened. And now he's performing again at Olympique Lyon. And for that reason, we are bringing him into the squad because Palacios specifically is not showing any upside to himself, which is a bit of a letdown, but hey, it is what it is. We'll accept it and we'll put Paqueta right into that center midfield spot. Or we could change it around a little bit and ah uh, no, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna put him into the center midfield spot. I'm gonna turn him into a center midfielder because he has incredible all-round ability. He can defend, he can move forward, pass the ball, dribble, full star skiller, high attacking work rate. Another Brazilian has joined, and I'm very happy with that. But I do have a plan to bring one more in, actually. And that Brazilian I'm going for is Ederson. Because when it comes to goalkeepers with ability on the ball, there are only two, two people that I personally trust in. Well, actually, there's multiple. Manuel Neuer is definitely one of them. But when it comes to Brazilians, Alisson and Ederson are the ones. And as a Liverpool fan, I don't want to be biased here. So I did go ahead and get an Ederson because technically I feel like Ederson with his feet is probably a better goalkeeper. But I would say Alisson is a better, uh, better shot saver. That's just my personal opinion, especially one-on-one. -on -one. Alisson is insane. Yeah, he tends to make some mistakes at times, which he has done once again. The past few games, it's been weird. I had to offer 70 million plus test again for this Brazilian to come into our team. I think Ederson will be very happy to be able to jump into this starting lineup right now. A bunch more Brazilians reunited. Take a look at this. Ederson, Verissimo, Anthony, and Paqueta. Now we are set up with them Brazilians. How many five-star skillers do we have? Only Anthony. And be ooh, Bisuma now a five-star skiller too. Okay, I mean, technically, initially, Anthony is the only five-star skiller. That might be something that we have to change in the future. Uh, I do want to have a bunch more five-star skillers because, you know, this is... Ronaldinho's team, man. We can't have just one. Season two, lots of dubs. Sevilla is beating Atletico Madrid at the end of April. And we have no Real Madrid game here. But I am interested to see if we have progressed. Last season coming in into the top four was a good achievement, in my opinion, considering our team at that stage. But now with those players having jumped up massively, I'm expecting a little bit more from the lads. So... Having seen that these months have been quite good and unbeaten runs. Ah, we have lost in the Champions League against Leipzig, though. That's a bit of a letdown. We have beaten Real Madrid again. It seems like in the El Clasicos, the boys do step up. And La Liga title. It is right there for you to see. FC Barcelona is back at the top of Spain. But... We have to show consistency. If we are doing a rebuild that is already this successful going into the second season, I need to see that consistency after multiple years. Well done for the team. 80 goals scored. That is the most of anyone in the league. Only Atletico Madrid got close with three goals below. And for that, I hope Alvarez... Ooh, Alvarez has gone up plus five. Man. This rebuild is building up to be a nice one, isn't it? Now, I do see some low-rated players. Now, Ederson gone up plus one. That's good. Ansu Fati plus three. I'll take that. Kunde is looking incredible right now still. Anthony plus two. Uh, Paqueta up by plus four since his transfer. That's huge because I don't think he has 88 potential. But then again, I think he has like 87 or 86 technically. So that's really nice to see. Alvarez with a plus five ridiculous growth. So this Argentinian is actually becoming Ronaldinho's little favorite. Dahoud with the plus three. Very well done considering he's 27. Atal gone up by plus three as well. He's kind of saving himself. Ferriso with the plus three. I'll take that. And then Bisuma. Yeah, Bisuma is all right, I guess. And then Sessegnon. Maybe Bisuma and Sessegnon are the two where I think, yeah, we might have to, uh, Bisuma and Sessegnon, maybe we'll change it up there and bring someone else in because we do have huge chunks of money coming in after every season right now, like 200 plus million. So Barcelona 
They might be back, man. They might be back where they belong. I've also seen the president of Barcelona come out and say that Barca is now slowly going after big players again and that reputation is building back up. I don't know what he's talking about. Where is this money coming from? They bought Ferran Torres and now there are rumors of like Haaland and stuff. I'm like, what the hell is happening here? But at the same time, I kind of wouldn't mind if Haaland ends up at Barca and Mbappe ends up at Real Madrid and we have them two battle for like 10 years plus. I'm not against it, man. I really am not against it. And especially with all the talents that both teams have, there could be a bright future ahead with them two battling out against each other. So I would not mind seeing that. But this season has been a good one. Let's move on and let's keep it up. Champions League trophies, multiple La Liga titles until this rebuild is done for me personally. I want to see everyone above 90. But for that to happen, Bisuma and Cecilio might have to be moved on. I'll check their potentials next year and see how it goes from there on. Scorer-wise, Fatih 23-14, Alvarez 21-7, Braithwaite. <laughs> what is this guy doing in here? Paqueta 11-9, Dahoud had a good season, good season as well. But I think Cecilio is definitely going. Bisuma, I don't know yet. We'll see. The new season begins with 277 million. As I said before, we're going to be dealing with the left back and the CDM position. First of all, let's start off with the left back. I think there's only one player that we should be looking at here that has at least four star skills and has high attacking work rate. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Of course, that one man has to be Alfonso Davies. When I think of a modern left back right now that runs down that side up and down and gets things done in the attack as well. Alfonso Davies is the number one that comes to my mind. He did have an incredible season lately, but then again, he kind of fell off a little bit. I think he picked up an injury as well. He started making TikTok videos, but nonetheless, he is still an extremely talented and a very, very young player that I personally think is going to be looked at as one of the greatest left backs uh, somewhere down the line. But now he's joining Barcelona. He is going to be our left back from this moment on. Cessignon. Thank you for your service, but now it's time to upgrade. And he cost us $140 million, which obviously is a lot of money. Here's the thing. I was thinking about bringing in someone new for Bisuma, but if you look at the development plan of Bisuma, it kind of tells you that he's going to grow very soon. Uh, it was like five weeks. Yeah, five weeks, which is not a lot of time. And he did have a good season after all. So I kind of felt like, you know what? It, it would be kind of pointless to get rid of him. I like him a lot. Uh, this guy's a beast, so I personally don't want to let him go. I feel like I should just trust this team. The team's good. Verissimo is going to go up as well very soon. I think it was like six or seven weeks. He's going to be an 85 rated player. I feel like this is the team to take us forward. We have enough Brazilians in there, which is a good thing, obviously. That's exactly what we wanted. And uh, we have everyone with high work rates or and or five, uh, four to five star skills. But then again, I wanted another five-star skiller. It's something that had just came to my mind. I just wonder where to fit that five-star skiller in because Alvarez I like as like the Messi uh, uh, type player in our team, the Argentinian to lead the line. So um, I don't want to take him away from this Barca squad. And if I look at the rest of the squad, I I just don't know. I just don't know where, where to put this five-star skiller in. And maybe the hoot spot. Is there a center midfielder who has five-star skills? The only one that comes to my mind is Thiago Alcantara right now. There's only one player that comes to my mind. It is Martin Odegaard, the former Real Madrid player. Has revived his career at Arsenal by the looks of things. 87 rated right now. And the hood. I'm sorry, brother. I really like you. But uh, just for the sake of the five-star skillers and the Joga Bonito, we're going to go ahead and bring in Odegaard. The thing is, man, I have not seen Ode Odegaard's skill ever since I've seen him join Arsenal. Now, obviously, I don't watch every single game. But five-star skills on Odegaard is a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Anyways, we're going to go ahead and, and offer uh, Dahoud plus, let's say, 40 mil. They probably want even more than that because this game is stupid. 100... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what, man? You can keep your five-star skillers. Ronaldinho, I'll make sure that these guys get to five-star skills, okay? Uh, Dahoud, I'm going to turn him into a five-star skiller before I go ahead and pay 190 for Odegaard. Get out of here. Halfway through the season, Ansu Fati, five-star skills. Alvarez, five-star skills. Anthony, Dahoud, Bisuma, Paqueta, 
all of our midfielders and attackers are now part of the Joga Bonito club. So don't you worry about us not having enough five-star skillers. It's all good now. They have all learned during the training sessions from Ronaldinho. I'm pretty sure he has shown them a couple of tricks. Real Madrid in the Champions League in April. We have beaten them. Is this actually already the season? We have the cup final in April against Real Madrid. We beat them. Paris, uh, Paris Saint-Germain. What happened? We... <laughs> yes. Barcelona is back. Come on. Wait, you couldn't see that. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's freaking go, man. Real Madrid is out of it. And we are here to take this team to the Champions League final. What a beautiful moment. I can't wait to see the squad. It is probably ridiculous at this stage. Look at this team right here. 93, 90, 93, 88, 87. Bisuma, I trusted in you. And it was the right choice, wasn't it? Paqueta. Lee, uh, we have Alphonse Davies, Verissimo, 88. Wow, that's insane growth this season. Atal, 88. Ederson, 92. And the bench and everything. We only care about Palacios here. And we only care about Cessignon. Those are some good ones. Balde has actually done well for himself there. Going up as much as he has. But these guys don't play a role. This is the squad that we have created for Ronaldinho. He has his own Messi in Alvarez here. As the 90 rated uh, centre forward in our squad. Then we have Ansu Fati leading the line down the left-hand side. Kind of Neymar-esque for us right here on the left. Anthony on the right-hand side. The Brazilian five-star skiller. Dahoud somehow made his way into the team and now is a five-star skiller as well. Paqueta, another Brazilian that Ronaldinho would absolutely love. And Alfonso Davies is just exactly what Ronaldinho would like to have behind him if he were to play in the left-wing spot. Uh, which he did for certain periods of time. I think he would have a great time with Alfonso next to him. And then Atal being our very own Danny Alves type player on that right back spot. This is a great team worthy of a Ronaldinho in my opinion. 29 goals, 9 assists for Ansu Fati. Alvarez 28 in 6. Adahut 15 in 9. Well done. Anthony 15 13. Paqueta 13 11. Napoli. I don't think you have a chance, but. You can try, right? You can try, Napoli. You will get your, your chance right now. Let's see if these boys can stop us or if we can go ahead and wrap up this rebuild on this stage right here. Champions League final, Napoli versus Barca. I'm excited to see their team because I never really played against Napoli in a Champions League final before. First of all, we're going to put this on ultimate, of course, because uh, legendary is too easy for me at this stage. Unas plays up top. Insignia down the left. Politano down the right. Ruben Neves. Renato Sanchez. Okay. By the way, Wolves have just beaten Manchester United at their home ground. Oof. Big, big, big result for Wolves, but a terrible one for Manchester United fans to see. Fabian here at CDM. Zinchenko, Manolas, Rahmani. Who the hell is Rahmani? Di Lorenzo, Mere. I'm surprised that this team is in a Champions League final. From what I can tell here, I see a lot of small players, by the way. I see no physicality in this squad up until Fabian. And then downwards, yeah, sure, Manolas and stuff. But Sanchez, Neves, Unas, Insigne, Politano, all pretty short players. Just something I have realized now. Maradona, the legend himself, is of course being honored by the Napoli fans right here. I don't know what it is with Italian career modes, guys, guys but I, I love doing career modes in the Serie A, personally. Maybe after the Youth Academy one, I might go ahead and do one in, in Italy. Uh, but then again, I have to do my Create a Club one, which I haven't done yet. So I'll be looking forward to that one as well. But here we go, guys. This is it. Knockout phase. They have beaten Napoli. They have beaten Bayern Munich. They have beaten Leipzig. Okay. I mean... It's not, it's not a bad run of games for sure. This this team still probably has something about them. I should not be underestimating them. But here goes Barca, Alvarez and the boys. Let's start it. Ansu Fati is the captain. If we do win it, of course, Ansu Fati will be lifting it. And of course, if I am playing in a Ronaldinho team, I better do five-star skill moves, right? We can't be just scoring the most simple goals. We got to get past people with skills. Otherwise, I will not accept anything else. Alvarez... Alvarez. Alvarez. I'm trying. It's going to make winning this game a little bit harder, but if I can pull it off, I'll be very happy. Beautiful pass. Alvarez into Fati. Down the left, we have an option and we fail. But early on, we get a couple of moves moving forward. Oh, I love that skill move from Paqueta. That throws me off even. Here we go. We have Alvarez and Fati. And now 
We have him, Alvarez, again on the ball. Anthony, the Brazilian, making his move through the defenses. Beautiful tricks. Playing it across to Paqueta. Bang! Ooh! Paqueta! 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 The build-up with the skills. And the beautiful left-footed strike from Paqueta. What a beast. What a finish. And what a way for Barcelona to take the lead in the Champions League final. Man, I do miss it. I do miss Barcelona being actually, like, sick, you know? I, I, I gotta say, man, I, I, I hate, I hate the fact that Manchester City is, like, technically the best team out there. Let's be real. They just have the most insane squad. They're dominating the Premier League. Their play style is incredible. But I just can't support them, man. Like, obviously, I can't because I'm a Liverpool fan. But, like... I just don't enjoy watching their games. Am I the only one? They play beautiful football. Absolutely stunning. But for me, like, in my head, there's something in there that just constantly tells me, oh, they just bought it with money. They just bought it with money. Leave it, leave it. Don't think about it. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I can't respect it for some reason. Uh, it's just for me. I'm okay with teams spending money, but I feel like Man City has just gone overboard, man. They can just buy, I don't know, 50, 60 million worth players as just backups for their 100 to 200 million worth players in a starting lineup. It's just crazy. And here goes Ansu Fati. Let's do something about this. We're playing against the light blues. Let's think like this is this is the squad of Pep. Let's pretend we're up against Man City. Oh, did he just beat me there? What the hell was that? I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Whoa. What a tackle by Verissimo. I thought I was going to get a red there. Incredible. Oh, wow. He actually injured him. Unas is out. He is out of the game. Verissimo took him out properly. Oh, wow. That did look rough, I got to say. Who did get subbed in now? Who was that? Is that a better player? Golovin? Golovin? <laughs> is this team okay? <laughs> why, am I, why am I seeing a center midfielder being subbed on for a... A striker it would be typical me if i laugh about golovin coming in and then he scores a goal against me i swear to god please no okay Whew. well done ederson well done now let's play it out from the back i want to see flare passes i want to see six skill moves that's all i want to see step overs coming in right now Whoopa. oh wow why, why did bisuma not do any skill move there that was a weird one we still have control over it dahoud looking across fatty great turn nice dribble over to Alvarez. Alvarez taking it down the wing. Alvarez, nice skill move. Potentially could bring it back to Alfonso. Alfonso, Alvarez, the back heel passes. You love to see it. The cross and the score. What was that? What the hell was that from, from Paqueta? He wanted to go for like a sideways scorpion kick. What, what the hell is that? Oh, Kunde just ruining them. Bro, physically, we're just dominating this team right now. And I love it. It's only 1-0. I'm messing around too much. Insignia. Oh, whoa. That's a bit fast. I thought he would be old by now. Why is he so quick? Insignia. We got to stop him. Oh, could not do it. Insignia still under control. What is he doing, though? That's my question. Like, why are they playing it out? Are you okay, Napoli? The second half here begins against Napoli. Now, guys, all I want to see, really, is that the likes of the old greats, like the likes of Barcelona, the likes of Real Madrid, the likes of AC Milan, Inter, all these teams come back and fight for the big trophies again. Because after all, Alvarez is the GOAT. Oh my god, imagine if I could have pulled that off. <laughs> that would have been nice. But, you know, I'd rather see the likes of Barca, Real, all these squads be out there doing their thing. Better than seeing Man City do it, you know? It's just, you know, it's just boring. I have no passion. I, I I, don't, I like, the thing is, I have no feelings towards them. That's what bothers me the most. Like, I don't hate them. I just, it's just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you want it. No surprise. You spend 10 billion on your team, you know? It's just like, I don't know. I'd rather have anyone else of these big, big clubs that have history come back and do well again. So, I, I like the fact that Barca is out there and spending money on the likes of Ferran Torres and there's rumors about Haaland potentially joining and stuff like I'm all for it because I, I need someone to take away this whole Man City hype. Yeah, sure. They has, they still haven't won the, champ, uh, the, the Champions League, which is a good thing because once that happens, uh, everything's going to fall apart. I don't want that. Alvarez. Alvarez. 
What the hell are you doing? What am I doing? Good ball. Alvarez again. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. No one's attacking him. Bro, this is ultimate difficulty. Why is no one attacking me? Look at what the goalkeeper's doing. The <laughs> EA, how are you coding your games? Like, I, I actually really want to know. Because the defenders are not pushing towards me when I stand still. The goalkeeper is. How does... Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, please. Okay, Napoli. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to you. Kunde is, a, is ridiculously good, by the way. Here goes Alvarez. Over to Ansu Fati. We need Ansu Fati to do something here. Ansu Fati cuts inside. Ansu Fati stops. He's still going. And he lost it. I like what he did there, though. It was nice build-up. Well done. Across to Lucas Paqueta. Bisuma with the back heel with skill. Ansu Fati passing it across. Here goes Alvarez. That's it. I wanted that so bad. It was such a nice attack. Come on, Ansu Fati. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 82nd minute. Danger. Danger. Alarm. 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 Stop him. Stop him, please. Yes. Whew. All right. We were completely open there. I don't know why we we're this attacking. Maybe it's because I really want to score another goal here. Go on. Move it. Five minutes left. I want to see something great. Nice back heel. Ansu Fati. Another back heel. Another back heel. Another back heel. Go on then. Nicely played. Pass it across. Alvarez. Passing it again. Ansu Fati making a beautiful run down the wing. He's going to get that under control. Nice move by Ansu. Ansu Fati now leading the line. And he gets taken out inside the box. The ball does not go through the way I wanted it to. Good pass to Renato Sanchez. Here we go again. Ansu gets another chance. He wants to bang it from outside the box. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Oh, hold on. Mistakes were made. Yes. No. <laughs> I wanted to score with him. Anyways, Barcelona have just won the Champions League trophy against a very, very odd opponent. I have to say, despite me only winning 1-0... This has to be the weakest, like genuinely the weakest Champions League final opponent I've ever played against. I have no clue how this team beat Bayern Munich and Dortmund and such, especially Bayern. Like, what the hell happened here? Nonetheless, hopefully this is something that we can see in the future again. Barcelona have some incredible talents with the likes of Pedri, Fati. Balde is very talented as well. He, do, he does really well in the like under 23 or under 21 Spanish national team and stuff. There's like a lot of great talent in the squad. I probably missed a couple there anyway. Serginho Dest and such. But the best of them, Ansu Fati is going to lift that trophy. Hopefully himself and uh, uh, Pedri are going to be remaining at that club for a very, very long time. Alongside the likes of Gavi and such. And building up the next generation of great Barcelona players. But Ronaldinho has done it, guys. He has done it in his own way. With high attacking work rate and four-star skills minimum, he wanted them to play Jogo Benito. They have done it, and they have won it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Take care, and peace.